I remember Dad saying in 1963 it was the wettest year they had. And he said all of this was under, under water for nearly five or six months, the whole of this plain. That summer, he could you know, almost smell the soil had gone, you know, pretty salty. Well, when the pipeline went in, you know, back in the 20s and 30s, that revolutionised this, this wheat belt area. Freshwater was the name of the game. Most of Tamman was probably cleared by the 50s. The problems really started to show up probably in the 60s and 70s, you know, it was massive. It's always been here, um, but it's just, you know, since we cleared it, it's got worse. You know, the only, the only thing you're sure of in business is change, so you've got to adapt. We probably started planting trees nearly um, probably back in the mid 80s when Dennis and Joss started over there with the nursery. When Dustin sort of started talking about the Anamika and we saw it at round at field days and that, we got pretty keen on it. This is an Anamika salt bush. All behind me is all Anamika which has been taken from a cutting. It was developed by CSIRO for palatability, digestibility and biomass. Anamika took about 15 years to develop, so we started by collecting saltbush from across Australia. We assessed 60,000 plants in order to select one plant that had the highest feeding value and the highest biomass production. We then grew those plants out and assessed them for eight years for their agronomic and, and feeding potential. Anamika is special because it has higher digestibility, higher palatability to sheep, and produces eight times more biomass than the mean of the plants we assessed in our collection. So this is a, a cutting, and you can tell by the Anamika salt bush that all the leaves, because it's a cutting, it's the same plant. So all the leaves, all the genetics, the whole plant is exactly the same plant. It's not genetically modified, it's just a clone of the same plant. So when the sheep go in and graze it, they're grazing all the, all the plants the same, the, the preference is all the same, so it fits a a niche in the market where we have six to eight weeks of the year where there's no rainfall, no green feed. Um, so producers can put it in and get vitamin E and minerals and a green pick um, at that time of year. The tree planter we use has got a blade that rips and like a ripping, ripping tine. And I think that's crucial because the roots just get down quickly once you do it. Each plant's planted two and a half metres apart. So basically we've gone through and We've done five rows and then we've left a gap of about five metres so we can run a ute down there for mustering. Good hard, you know, stripping back of it and it just regenerates and goes again. This plant here is probably, you know, five or six years old, but it's been heavily grazed at times. It would have been stripped back. Now it's just reshooting and growing new shoots, which would be nice and probably more palatable. We're using this specifically in autumn to get the ewes off the paddocks that we want to use over winter. The sheep we've got on them now, the pregnant ewes, they've just been in here for three weeks and we're supplementary feeding them with barley and hay. And then they're obviously eating the Anamika salt bush in between that. The old salt bushes, it was fine, but some of them were quite unpalatable and the sheep just, you know, they'd eat a bit, but they wouldn't really hoe into it, where this one, they'll strip it right back just about, if, you know, if they're left in there. The more they eat, the less you have to supplementary feed. It's great for, you know, just to put sheep on there and lock up before the break of the season. And then we're keeping them in here during the break of the season. And then we can let the other paddocks get going and then rest this for a while and then bring them back on later on in the year, sort of. It's utilising, you know, the whole system, really. If I'm getting five kilojoules of energy off that, that is money to me. And that is repaying what I'm doing. If you look around now, you know, you feel a bit better about the landscape, seeing something growing and something productive there. It's good to see it getting back on track and, you know, starting to look good again and feeling good about it and seeing something productive on the land. If you can get some economic benefit out of it, I think it's a win-win situation for everyone.